John 10 states, The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognizes his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. And then in the next passage, I'm going, all right, there it is. I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give life, give them a rich and satisfying life. And then it continues and says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. Then it continues, it says, and so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he isn't only, he's only working for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as my father knows me, I know the father. Okay, so before we pray, did anybody pick up on the two I am statements in those passages, in those scripture? Yell it out. So I am the gate, and then what was the other one? Perfect. All right, let's bow our heads with me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, um, we're thankful for these passages and for the scripture. Thank you for being our shepherd and our gate. Uh, I'm excited to go and dive into these. Lord, I just ask if there's any just nervousness, anxiety, um, any just uncomfortability in this room, Lord, I just ask that you help ease it, that you comfort it. If there's any sickness, um, anything that's going on with um, family members or friends, Lord, I just ask that you help us, you heal us, and you be with us tonight as we read the word. And all God's people said, that was a sad amen. All God's people said, amen. All right, cool. So the scripture that we just read was from what? John, and it was one through, hint, it's on the board. Great job, guys. Okay, so the scripture that we just read is full of love. So you're probably reading that, and you're like, so Jesus said he's the good shepherd. He said a lot about sheep. He said a lot about flock. He said about a hired hand. But like, Gavin, I didn't, I didn't really see, like, the word love mentioned a ton there. So it may not appear that way because the metaphors and, like, all the symbolism it's kind of confusing. I mean, it's hard to understand. When I first read it, when I got this passage, I was like, okay, it's hard for me not to take this literally. Are you, God, are you saying that you are a gate? Like, are you going to form into a gate and, like, that's going to be what you're going to be about? And he's like, no, Gavin, why would I, why would I do that? Um, and I was like, cool, thanks. Um, and so when we're reading these past couple, of, past couple of weeks, these scriptures and the scriptures that we're going to continue to read comes from somebody by the name of... One person, woo! All right, so Jesus. This comes from scripture from Jesus. Um, and it's someone who loves us endlessly. There's no cap to this guy's love. Yes, I did say cap. Um, we also know that this place that we come to every Sunday night is full of love. There might be times or moments that there is tension among us and that we feel like we don't really like each other that much. Um, but know here at Fusion that our tensions will come and go but it's ultimately Jesus that remains. It's ultimately Jesus that holds us together. It's Jesus who loves us. It's Jesus that allows us to love each other. So I know it may be hard at times to think about that, but Jesus loves us truly. He loves us. So you're welcome here. And these scriptures that we're about to go in today show how much God loves each and every one of you. I'm not promising that you'll feel it right away from just reading this passage alone or that you might not feel it all the time, but know that the, regardless of what you may be feeling, God loves us, he cares for us, protects us, and he is our gate, and he is our shepherd. Are you guys ready to get into the word? Yeah. yeah. That was, okay, cool. Are we ready to get in the word? Yeah. All right, sick. There we go. Awesome. There's a test afterwards. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so in Jesus 10, Jesus compares us to sheep. So what do we know about sheep? They're dumb, they're stupid, they're what? They're dense. <laughs> they're dense. They're fluffy. Anything else? Any other ideas about sheep? There is a picture of a sheep on the screen. Sean? They're fluffy? 
They're fluffy. So, yeah. They're followers. That's a good one. Okay, so some of the things that you kind of pinpointed, sheep are dumb, they're stupid, they're aimless. So I'm going to be about to give you a little mini lesson on sheep. So sheep follow their shepherd. And it's not because, like, it's just the guy standing there and they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. It's they follow him because of really, really just important things. So sheep, because of their makeup, it's nearly impossible for them to rest unless they're free of these four things. So free of fear, free of friction or tension with other sheep, free of pests or aggravation, so like things, nicks, different things on their bodies, and then free of hunger. So a sheep that we see in pictures that seem kind of like chill and really cute, like typically there's probably some sort of shepherd nearby that's kind of easing their stress because without being free of these four things, a sheep will completely just go in panic, will be fearful, have a ton of anxiety, they can't rest, so they're not eating properly. They, they, they literally cannot survive if they don't have these four things. I mean, it sounds kind of like, like us, like, I don't know about you guys, but if I am hungry all the time, probably not gonna survive that long. Make sense? So just simply, but however, these four things are solved by the shepherd. So the shepherd frees them of fear. The shepherd helps free them of friction or tension with other sheep. He helps like, you know, get the pests out, helps get, heal their aggravations. And he also helps them to like feed them, to give, lead them to good water, etc. So just simply being in the presence of the shepherd, they can rest. So if a sheep has any of these four things, and either thinks, it may not even like, it might not be like they just ate, and then 20 minutes later, like, holy cow, I'm hungry. They're freaking out. Like, it's just, it, their brains are not as smart as ours. So when they are fearful of that, they're on the edge of something like this happening, it, they see the shepherd come in, like if we're a bunch of sheep just chilling, and we think we're, we don't have any food to eat, we're fearful, we're aggravated with the person next to us, but if simply the shepherd walks in, their, their presence alone helps them to rest. So is there somebody in your life that just simply them being near you helps calm you down? Just their voice alone helps them, helps you to just chill. Is there somebody in your life that like brings you a plate of food and you're like, thank you, Lord. I know that's my mom a lot of the times, and I don't know about you guys, that's, it's a really peaceful thing. So, for example, in my life, I don't know about you, but I have a friend that's like 200 pounds and he's like six foot tall. And this dude is like, you see him walking through the room, you know he's walking through the room. Like, he is a big dude. Um, and his, a good friend, another good friend of mine named Josh, so Alden, really tall dude, like 200 pounds, and then Josh, super ripped. So whenever I'm with them, like, I could be walking down the streets of Philadelphia, I could be walking anywhere in New York, and I feel safe, because these guys are buff. These guys are big dudes, and I know that, like, me being a measly 5'5", five, five, like, my voice sometimes squeaking, I know these guys are going to, like, help me out. These, gonna, these guys are really going to help me out. Is there people in your life that make you feel that way, that you feel like safe, you feel secure? And if there isn't, I wanna show you and introduce you to somebody that could. So they know, so back to sheep. So sheep know that they are okay because the shepherd protects them, right? And he takes care of them. He eases their fear, he settles any friction, he remedies aggravations, he leads them to a place to eat so they know they'll be fed. The sheep, however, can't, Trust, they can't follow the shepherd unless they trust the shepherd. So he has trained them to trust. He has proven to them he can be trusted. So when he is, when the sheep are in the shepherd's presence, they are free of fear, their tension is gone, their aggravations are settled, their hunger is solved, and they know that he will satisfy their needs. So when we read John 10, and we're like, why is, like, what is this comparison going? We are the sheep. It might not be hard for us to admit it sometimes, but honestly, I can admit from many stories, I can be very dumb. I can be very aimless. I, I mean, my worship team from Transit Infusion can admit to that many times. I have done so many things that I don't like. But it's because of 
the shepherd, that we can trust in him. I know my voice got really loud there. So do you trust Jesus as your shepherd? Do you trust him to satisfy your needs? Do you trust that you can surrender what you're carrying, the burdens, the aggravations? Do you care that you trust that he is walking ahead of you, protecting you, that he's guiding you? Do you know Jesus' voice? Because as sheep, if we don't trust our shepherd, it can't, it's really difficult to follow him. And so Luke 10.4 states, after he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his own voice. Sheep are creatures of habit. Often when they are led to their own devices, they'll go the same way, just walking their path, and it leaves ruts in the ground. So I don't know if you've ever looked at like mountains and like pictures on National Geographic and you see like those trails that kind of like follow up the hill. They're either left by humans or most likely left by sheep. So they always know where to go. Like after a while, the shepherd's like, this is where we're going. And the sheep are like, yeah, I know. I know where we're going. Um, sheep, they're creatures of habit. They leave ruts in the ground. So even though the shepherd is leading them to find good pastures, like it says in John 10, 9, sheep will be such terrible creatures of habit that they won't follow him. So a sheep going up this mountain, this is like the 10th time they've gone up there this week. And they're like, oh yeah, this is where we're going. But the shepherd's like, no, this is not safe anymore. We have to go here. They won't follow the shepherd. Sometimes they'll just keep on following their own rut. In fact, they'll follow their own way because they get impatient. They feel like they know what's best for them. They think, God, like, or shepherd, I don't know what you're talking about. This is a path I've gone for the past five years. I know where this leads. Does this sound somewhat familiar to us. We can be kind of stuck in our ways. We can wake up in the morning, get in our routines. Uh, we can forget, to, you know, we forget to read the Bible. We forget to do different things. And I am I'm also equally blame that as well. But if we get impatient with something that God's given us, it can be hard for us to think that God knows better because we think we know ourselves. So I remember in a time um, when this is simple, like literally just yesterday, I was standing in front of a microwave, heating up some food, and I was like, this is taking way too long. I want to eat my food now. I'm hungry. So I took it out before the timer was off, and I got it, and I sat down. I was like, cool, this is great. I'm like hungry. I'm ready to eat. And it was cold. I don't know if you've ever felt that way, but when you are like cozy and you just like opened up food out of a microwave and you're ready to eat and you take a bite and it's cold, it's very disappointing. Um, and so I was impatient with the food. I was impatient with the microwave, with the time. This is gonna be a simple activity. It's gonna be simple stuff that we become impatient with. And so instead of following the shepherd, it's the sheep that believe that they are good that the shepherd is not leading them to good food, they're good water. And so just like I wasn't satisfied with the food that was in the microwave, the sheep will just drink out of a mud puddle. And you know what's in mud? Dirt, bugs, bacteria, sickness. So in fact, the sheep think that they, can, they are satisfying themselves in the moment, but in fact, they're giving themselves sickness. They're hurting themselves. They're causing bathroom problems upset stomachs. So when our, we let our good shepherd lead, we find ourselves being brought into something better. But if we stop to satisfy ourselves instead of waiting on what he has for us, we sell ourselves short, like the sheep sell themselves short for the mud puddle. He has and is all that we need. Where is he leading you today, right now? Have you veering from his path? Have you been drinking out of the mud puddle? Come back. Let him provide for you in all the areas of your life. So John 10, 7 through 10 states, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal, steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. So continuing on this topic of sheep, they're dumb, they're aimless, they're stuck in their ways, 
They believe sometimes that the water ahead of them is better than the water the shepherd's leading them. But in the other statement, we said Jesus is the good shepherd, but what was the other one? He is the gate. So in these times, it went as a shepherd, they would, there's this thing called a sheepfold. And so as the shepherd was leaving, like leading the sheep to safety, because like, you know, and they're out in the wilderness, it's kind of, can be scary. So there's a sheepfold. And so during those times, they didn't necessarily have like, you know, those like metal gates that we see that surround horses and stuff. So a lot of times it would be this like massive pile of like rocks and different things to protect the sheep that the shepherd would bring them into. But instead of an actual gate, the shepherd would stand and sit or sit in front of that entrance. So literally the only way that the, somebody could get to the sheep or some animal could get to the sheep was through the shepherd. So what we're hearing here, here from Jesus is not only he is somebody that's going to care for us, he's going to lead us, we follow his voice, he's going to help us lead us good pastures, but he's also somebody that's ready to protect us, to be a sacrifice for us before somebody would get to the gate. So he's saying, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. So to even put it into further, to put this uh, metaphor and symbolism further, does anybody know what a cast sheep looks like? Know what that term means? A cast sheep? It's not like a cast like you put on your leg. So a cast sheep look like that. That's what a cast sheep looks like. It's basically on its back. So a cast sheep, if you're looking at this picture, you're like, well, that sheep can just get over. Well, sheep, when they're in there in this position, their equilibrium is so bad that they can't get off of that, like their back. Like they can't move. So eventually, if nobody's around or if there's not another like a shepherd around to come and care for the sheep, the sheep will either die of starvation or an animal will come and eat it. Like they can't roll over. They literally cannot. No matter how hard they move their legs, no matter how more like they sway side to side, they can't because their equilibrium is so off. So the only way that a sheep is able to get up is through the shepherd. Do you guys believe me? Do you? Truly, okay, if you don't, or you're having some reservations, and even if you do, I'm gonna have some kids come up here and we're gonna do a little demonstration of what a cast sheep feels like. So I'm gonna need somebody like big and tall to be a shepherd. All right, I'm gonna, you're coming up here to be our shepherd. Okay, so Taylor, what, you're, what they were gonna say your shepherd Taylor, okay? Um, you're gonna be a sheep. Cole, you're gonna be a sheep. Jackson, you're going to be a sheep. Sean, you're going to be a sheep. Okay, so the reason why I'm just doing guys is because the shepherd has to kind of get underneath, and I don't want that for you ladies. So, okay, so shepherd, you're going to get over here. You're going to stand here. You're going to chill in. So you guys, you're going to lay on your backs. And then stick your feet and hands straight up in the air. So that's a cast sheep. Keep them straight. Keep them straight. So... No matter, so like these guys, it's kind of funny. If you guys want, take a picture. They can't do anything. So these are sheep. They're cast. They can't move. No matter how hard that they try to sway side to side, these legs are staying straight up in the air. They can't move. So the shepherd comes along and he goes, oh no, they're in danger. And so watch, so you're gonna help, you're gonna be on coal. We're gonna be the shepherds. So what the, the literally the shepherds will do is they'll help rock them, help them get adjusted, move them over, help lift them up, and then help them on their way. Cause or that. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause for our, our sheep and shepherds. So <laughs> that's dangerous. Okay, so when a sheep is cast out in the open without the safety of the shepherd or the gate that we just talked about. They are unable to move. Therefore, they find themselves completely vulnerable to the elements and the predators around them. So the only way, like we just saw, for the sheep to get up, even though you're probably thinking, like, these guys can get up. Well, just think about it. They're sheep. <laughs> they're sheep. They're dumb. They're aimless. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So the only way they can defend themselves is with the shepherd's help. So 
if the sheep in this position is faced with death from like a coyote, another animal, etc., the shepherd, who we just talked about in scripture, that Jesus said he's the shepherd and the gate, will literally put themselves in harm danger for the sheep. They will put their lives on the line to defend the sheep. It could be one sheep or it could be multiple sheep. It doesn't have to be a select amount. The shepherd will put themselves in harm way to protect them, just like Jesus sacrificed himself for you and I. Isn't that kind of crazy? So, exactly. That, I feel like that's divine intervention right there. So, what I'm saying is, so we're, we're pulling this, right? Are we following? So, we are sheep. We are dumb. We are aimless. We are stupid. We uh, get sought in our rays. We are like, I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. And we feel like we're dumb and we're forgetful. Jesus says that he is our shepherd. When sheep are cast and when they're outside on their own, without the help of the shepherd, they can't get back on the right path. Just like in scripture, how it says that without Jesus' help, without his gift of salvation, we can't get on our own right path towards heaven. Isn't that crazy? It blows my mind that Jesus sacrifices himself just like a shepherd would. In these times, these were jobs that a shepherd would have. It's crazy. So in John 10, 12, it states that a hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf will attack them. He'll scatter their flock. The hired hand will like, he'll, he's like, sorry guys, peace. It's not worth my life. And he's dipping out. Basically, it's typically for money because if he survives, he still gets paid. So in this situation, unlike the hired hand, unlike the shepherd like Taylor and I were, Jesus would do anything in his power to protect us. The hired hand would run away without even a second thought. So just think about this. We're the sheep. We got stuck with a really tough rut. Something family going on, something with friends happening. We ended up going to school and we bombed like four or five tests back to back. Like we, it could be literally something simple. It could be like you stubbed your toe and it hurts still. You could be walking through life thinking like, God, if you're up there, why do I feel pain? Why am I sad? Why am I feeling sorrowful? And he is like, I'm right here. I am your shepherd. Let me help you up. So who and what in your life right now have you hired to protect you? Or let me say this in a better word. So what in your life is preventing you or taking over for what is rightfully Jesus's? So in that scripture that we just read, in the scripture that we're reading, it's saying that Jesus is our shepherd. He's guiding us. He's protecting us. He is our gate. He's making sure that nothing gets in our way. But as sheep are, they sometimes don't think that the shepherd's right. And just like we do, we don't always think that Jesus is right, that the Bible is right. But then we find ourselves in a rut. But what are we putting ahead of Jesus? What, aka the wolf, the enemy, that is attacking you, is scattering you from healthy community. What is that thing? Is it money? Is it lust? Is it high academic achievement? Is it cars? Is it working out? Is it social media? Et cetera, et cetera. All these things are, can be, I mean, all these things like minus lust can be good things, but only if they are not taking priority over Jesus as our shepherd. So for example, for many years, I found myself putting a lot of those things that I just mentioned over Jesus. I was caught up with certain things on my computer with, um, that put the world ahead of me that was in, like I could see, I thought it was reality. And so if I just watched another video, if I just watched, it stayed on Instagram for long enough, I mean, if I got ripped and worked out, there was a time, yes, where I thought, yes, 5'5 five, five Gavin could get really ripped. And it, I was immediately heartbroken. Um, but is there another A that you're trying to achieve that Jesus and those around you is like that thing is taking priority? Yet, yeah, so I failed to recognize that the only person in the room that matters is Jesus. He is our good shepherd, He is our gate. So I know we talked a lot about sheep, and we talk a lot about 
shepherds and gates tonight, but it's because I want to like nail in your brains that these metaphors that Jesus is saying is coming from a place of love. That as shepherd, he is our shepherd. He is somebody that guides us, protects us, loves us, walks us through life, helps us when we're up. Like when sheep are cast, like when they're like that, they can't just, you know, flip over. Like the shepherd will literally like rub their bodies, rub their legs, make sure that they're feeling okay. Typically we'll bring them a drink of water, just like Jesus does for us. When we're going through a really, really tough time, Jesus is there comforting us, caring for us. He's right there. He's easily accessible, just like a shepherd is for a sheep. So this, these scriptures that we've gone through and then we'll continue to go through are a reflection of more of Jesus' character, who he truly is. He is loving and he is protecting of us. He sees our hardships, even though it's hard to see sometimes. He laughs with us. I mean, he was laughing right there when Taylor almost took David's pants off. I mean, like that, he's laughing with us. And there is comfort for us. He knows our names. <laughs> it was during the sheep activity. So I want you guys to know this, to remember a couple of things. Sheep, we are sheep. Can you say after me? We are sheep. That is really sad. I want you guys to believe it. We are sheep. We are sheep. Jesus is our shepherd. Jesus is our shepherd. And he loves us. And he loves us. He comforts us. He comforts us. He protects us. He protects us. He laughs with us. He with us. And he knows our names. And he knows our names. To think of a moment in your life that was just really challenging. It was really difficult that it felt like you had no idea where you were going, where you were leading. You, the people around you felt like that you couldn't, like they didn't know where they were going. So you kind of just felt like you were wandering aimlessly. Now I want you to think about something. When you came out of that like dark place, out of that valley, who were you as a person? Do you feel, did you feel stronger? Did you feel that you could have accomplished anything after you got out of that valley? And if you didn't, that's okay. There's valleys, there's mountains. You can open up your eyes. So in this scripture that we've read, as Jesus being our shepherd, he leads us, he guides us. When we're in the valleys, it doesn't seem like he is. That he's not protecting us, he's not comforting us, he's not guiding us. But I want you to know that it's in the valley. There's a reason why mountains, there's not much vegetation. There's a reason why in the valleys, it's typically green. Because it's in the valleys that where things grow. Typically, time sometimes takes some difficult times to grow into who we are. We can't go mountain to mountain all the time. We, can't, we won't survive. There's not enough air. There's not enough oxygen. The shepherds know this, so they lead the sheep through the valley. So there's going to be moments where it feels difficult, it feels challenging, but know that Jesus is still leading. It might not feel like it all the time, but Jesus is leading you. He's protecting you. He's comforting you. He's with you. And in the end of Psalm 23, it states, My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. There's always a place for you in heaven. Jesus is there for you, he comforts you, he's with you. And so before we go into a time of worship, don't feel like you have to rush right up to the stage. I want you to talk to Jesus. Be open and honest with him. Be like, Jesus, this has been stinking lately. And I feel like you're not leading me. Talk to him about it. He is our friend. He is our savior. He's our Messiah. He wants to care for us. And then when you're ready, you can come to the front. Or if you still want to kind of chill and sit and pray, then you're more than welcome to. But then I also encourage you in your small groups to be honest, to be open, to talk to your small group leaders about some of the things of the valleys that you've been going through that you need some help with. There's a reason why there's awesome leaders and people here, because we care for you. Does that sound good? Yes? No? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Deep breath, everybody. 
You guys got this. I believe in you. Let's get into some worship. Take it away, worship team. <laughs> 